This weekend, viewers are in for a special treat when the moon moves in front of the sun, blocking sunlight and creating a fantastic ring of fire in the sky. It's called the annular eclipse and not a total solar eclipse, but we'll have one of those soon enough. In fact, to talk more about this, NASA heliophysics expert right. Nikki right. Rail is joining us to talk all about it. Uh, and Nikki, I feel like everywhere I look in the news or on social media, you see people saying, check out the eclipse, but we're not supposed to look at it, right? <laughs> well, you should definitely not look directly at it with your eyes. You need to have some solar filters, okay. eclipse glasses or solar filter, or you can use other methods like a pinhole filter, poke a hole in a piece of paper, hold it up, use a colander from a kitchen um, to see the, the shadow of the of the sun. But just please don't look at it directly with your eyes because that will damage your eyes. Where, where do I get one of these glasses? Where, where do you get those? So best bet for glasses is usually museums, science centers. Um, those are great places to pick them up. And if you don't have time to pick one up before tomorrow, those indirect methods are just as good. Um, and if nothing else is available, literally the shadow through leaves of, on a tree will show you these little um, miniature uh, you know, shadows of the sun. So there's great opportunities to view it with or without um, solar filters. Now, I've talked about this in my weather forecast about what the annular eclipse means, but can you explain to our, our viewers what does annular actually mean? Yeah, absolutely. So an eclipse is any time that the moon is between us and the sun. Tomorrow, an annular or ring eclipse, ring of fire, is when the moon is blocking out most of the visible light of the sun, but we're going to see literally a ring of bright glowing fire around the edge where it's not fully blocked out. Now, the path of totality is going to be from Oregon down through Texas, and the rest of the United States are really going to be seeing a partial eclipse, like a cookie with a bite out of it um, or a crescent-shaped yeah, and, and, and here in Bakersfield, I, I looked at this. We're going to have an 80% of it covering, and I believe it should be like a, more of a crescent. But uh, Yeah, but it's still great viewing in California, really prime all the western United States. You're going to see a really, really close to, you know, closer to totality and really good viewing opportunity where you are. Well, speaking of totality, we have a full eclipse coming next year, correct? Absolutely, we do. April 8th of 2024, we have a full solar eclipse. It's kind of taking a different path. We're from um, Texas up through Maine is the path of totality, and it's really going to block out visible light. It's going to kind of be moments of that kind of eerie darkness that we've experienced before during eclipses. Um, but that's that's the next event after tomorrow's uh, partial eclipse. Wow. It, what else is happening? You, you and I were talking before the break. There's not just a, a, a full solar eclipse coming, but there's something, there's more things with our sun. Yeah, so it's actually a really exciting time for solar activity. We're getting into a solar maximum period or time when the sun is really active on its 11-year cycle. So that's a great opportunity for science. In addition to that, so we have the partial solar eclipse tomorrow. We have the full solar eclipse in April. And then in December 2024, we have Parker Solar Probe uh, making its closest pass yet, literally touching the sun, this amazing Marvel uh, spacecraft that's getting within the solar atmosphere occurring. So it's this incredible time over the next year to really study and understand our neighborhood star. Wow. Uh, how, I'm just curious, how, how dangerous are solar flares? Can they really you know, affect our electricity and stuff? So solar flares for us on Earth aren't you know, dangerous. Where they, the, the risk is is with technology where we're increasingly reliant on things like you know, satellite for communications, navigation, some of our power grids. Um, so the reason we study these events during, you know, uh, all with our fleet of spacecraft that are orbiting um, Earth and all throughout the solar system and also these uh, eclipse events are so that we can better predict and understand what might happen from flares, protect our satellites, protect our power structure, protect our infrastructure from wow. space weather. Yes, space has weather. <laughs> space has, it does. And that's, that's, that's why I love talking about it myself. Nikki, yeah. Nikki Rail uh, from NASA, the Heliophysics. Thank you so much uh, for coming on. And uh, we're going to take your advice. We're not going to look into the sun tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good time. And by the way,